Hello. I have here on my bench another piece of test equipment from eBay. This is an EIP brand model 575 microwave counter. A 12 digit counter which can go from 10 Hz to 18 GHz. It was sold for parts or repair by some sort of an electronics recycling company. And they didn't know what was wrong with it. They said it came in in a batch of uh, bad equipment. And I already turned it on and it seems to work just fine. At least the basic features I tried. Except a tiny problem with the display, which I will show you later. This unit has three bands. Band 1 from 10 Hz to 100 MHz. Band 2, which overlaps with band 1, uh, from 10 MHz to 1 GHz, and band 3, from 1 GHz to 18 GHz. This unit is about 25 years old, I believe, and it is in a decent shape, uh, except some uh, chips in the paint on the corners, and there is a small dent here on the side, I can show you later. Here on the back we have this 10 MHz reference output, GPIB, and these tune and lock outputs. This thing can be used to lock some external signal source to its reference. There are some unpopulated options. Uh, these, I believe, are for rear outputs and band 4. Uh, this is uh, DAC output and I'm not sure about these. Here is a sticker about option 4, which is high stability time base. Here are the stickers. EIP Microwave Inc. San Jose, California. Made in USA. Option 4. This is the dent in the metal case I mentioned earlier. Let me show you that small problem I found. This thing has built-in tests and one of them, number 4, cycles through all the segments of the display. So let's enable it. Test 04. And look at this block of annunciators. It does not light up at all. Check this out. This Agilent signal generator also has a high stability time base option. And I warmed up the instruments for about an hour, uh, so they must have stabilized already. We are generating 100 MHz, 0 dBm, and using band 1 input. And uh, one part per million is here. So, as you can see, the instruments disagree by 3 to 4 counts here, which means 30 to 40 parts per billion. Not bad at all. Same thing using band 2 input. And now 1 GHz into the band 3 input. 1 ppm is here, 1 part per billion is here, so the instruments disagree by about 40 parts per billion. Let's have a look at the specs. These are the specs for the counter and these are for the Agilent signal generator. Here we have this option 4 time base and here we should look into this column for the option 1E5. So the first number to compare is this aging rate, 24 hours, one part per billion. And the corresponding number here is this one, which is 0 0.5 parts per billion. So it is two times better here. 
the next one short term stability one second average there is no corresponding number here the next one is temperature stability from 0 to 50 degrees C 30 parts per billion and here we have a slightly wider temperature range from 0 to 55 degrees C and the stability is 50 parts per billion so it is slightly worse here and the next one is uh, plus minus 10 percent line voltage change uh, it is 0 0.2 parts per billion here and the corresponding number here is this one for a slightly narrower range of um, voltage change from plus 5 percent to minus 10 percent and the number is two parts per billion which is 10 times worse than this one so it's hard to conclusively say which one is better some numbers are better here some numbers are better here and clearly these are two excellent stable references let's have a look inside there is a cable connection guide on the cover very nice and it looks excellent here so this is the third band RF section this is the uh, 10 megahertz uh, OECXO reference uh, this is the main transformer of course and this smaller transformer with the board I suspect uh, it is the uh, standby power supply for the organized uh, time base and I see the boards are labeled here so this is the power supply GPIB reference loop deck phase lock processor unit uh, count chain gate generator band 3 converter band 2 converter and there is a board here for the front panel and I suspect it will be hard to reach I would like to take it out and try fixing that display problem This is the band 2 converter. So the board is A109. And check this out. Each connector is clearly marked. A109J6 A109J5 so there is absolutely no problem how to connect this back excellent this is the third band converter controller I think I called it converter before and this is a controller and these plastic levers easily crack and fall off this one is cracked and I already glued this one with super glue and this one on the GPIB board is missing and by the way, so far I see date codes from 84 to 88. This chip has date code of 8419 and this one 
8803. This is the gate generator board. This is the count chain board. Check out this device and also look how the case of this device is soldered right to the board and there is a hole on the other side for its legs and look at this PCB trace this is the CPU board this is the phase lock board and it has chips with date codes from the end of 1989. For example, this one is dated 8944. This one is 8939. This board is marked Ref Loop DAC. This is the GPIB board. This is the power supply board. Look at these massive capacitors. Why not check these massive capacitors from the power supply? It was easy to unbolt them. So let's have a look. This one is 9500 microfarad, 25 volt. Eleven thousand. ESR is great. This one fourteen thousand twenty-five volt. Uh, 15,000 and the SR is wonderful. 32,000, 15 volt. 29,000 and the SR is wonderful as well. Not a problem at all. There you go. I took out all the boards. This is the bottom of the unit with the interconnect board. I still don't see how can I take out the front panel board. I finally managed to remove the front panel with the boards. It happens to be a sandwich of two boards. This block of LEDs did not light up. And look at them, they are sitting in sockets. Look at this. It seems like it was just a matter of bad connection somewhere. I reconnected the connectors between the boards and reseated the driving chip in its socket. Put everything back together and it works fine. Now I want to straighten out this dented side panel. Alright, I whacked this thing a few times with a rubber mullet. And I will call it good enough. Hardly noticeable from the outside. 
it's back together let's check the sensitivity here are the specs for band 1 sensitivity should be 25 millivolt RMS which corresponds to about minus 19 dBm we have 0 dBm now let's set it to minus 20 still fine let's go to minus 25 still fine minus 30 still works let's go down there you go around 33 around minus 32 dBm it stops working which is perfect now band 2 sensitivity minus 20 dBm according to the specs let's go to minus 20 works let's set minus 25 stops working let's go up a bit oh there you go around minus 24 point six and now band three let's look at the specs the specs go up to 20 gigahertz here because uh, this manual is for the model 575b i couldn't find any manual for 575 so let's assume they are close enough so for one gigahertz we should see minus 30 dbm of sensitivity now let's set minus 30 no problem let's go to minus 35 and it stops working uh, let's see where it starts around 31 minus 31 minus 32 which is great so it meets this spec just fine there you go i hope you enjoyed this i really like the build quality i found inside a very solid instrument works just fine i'm quite happy about it thank you very much for watching goodbye